Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to create a flashbang in which you can throw it and it will affect all players within a certain radius around the flashbang. So let me hit play and show what we're going to make today. So throwing it is just very, very simple. If I press G, you'll notice it's thrown like that, and then it will just kind of disappear. So there's no actual animation for it exploding or blowing up, but it will disappear like that. And just to note as well, I am in third person, but this works in both third and first. But if I were to throw it and I'm near it, you'll notice that what happens is the screen goes fully white and it will slowly fade out and we also have the ear ringing sound effect as well as you get in most games where you have a flashbang like so. So it gives the kind of classic effect that you'd see in any flashbang like this. And what we can also do as well is slow down the player if we wanted to so they are acting a bit more stunned. But this is what we're we'll going to be going over in creating today. Very easy to advance upon and customize for yourself. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you must do is obviously import your sound effect if you haven't done that already and I'll leave a link in the description down below to the one which I'm using and if you do use this one you must make sure that you do credit them as it's got an attribution license. But once you've got that what we want to do next is we want to actually start creating the flash effect and to do that I'm going to be using a widget. So I'm going to right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint and I'm going to name this one flash widget as that makes the most sense for me. I'm going to open it up straight away. Now in here all I'm going to do is very simply drag in an image and leave it blank as it is as that will give us a nice white effect. You can obviously change this to be whatever you want but for me that works well. Position X and Y I'm going to leave as 0, size X it will be 1920 and size Y will be 1080 and I'm going to anchor it to the whole screen just so it covers the whole screen like this. We can compile and save that. Now again, what I want to do is I don't want to have it just appear and disappear very suddenly and snap on and off. I want to actually animate this. So I'm going to create an animation down here. Now if you don't have the animations tab, what you can do is go to window up at the top and click animations and also click timeline as we're going to be needing both of these tabs here. But once you've got them, we're going to press the plus animation and I'm going to name this one flash as that makes sense for me. Then select the flash animation make sure you also have the image selected and in the timeline we're going to hit the plus track image 94 or whatever it's called for you and on the image we're going to add a track adding a render opacity track and now we can change the render opacity of this so it's going to be fading in and out or on and off now I'm going to be using values which I set up earlier however you can obviously customize this to have it looking however you like but for me I'm going to drag out this red line here all the way over to 5 seconds as that's the overall length I want this animation to be. And at the very beginning of the timeline I'm going to set the opacity to 0 so it's off screen by default. Then I'm going to go over just 2 frames so it's at 0 0.1 seconds and set the render opacity to 1. This means it's now going to fade on screen very very quickly. So essentially it looks like it's just only come up but it did actually fade in nice and quick which the player will notice. Then I'm going to go all the way to 1 second and add another keyframe. So press this button here in between the two arrows and that just means during this duration here it's going to be staying fully on the screen. So then if I go all the way to the end of five seconds I'm going to set the render opacity to zero which means it's going to take four seconds to slowly fade out as the kind of the player's eyes will be adjusting if they were actually flashbanged. So if I go back to the beginning and hit space to play you'll notice it is quickly flashed on screen and it's slowly going to be fading out as you can see there. And what I might actually do is delete the second keyframe here and go to 0.05 and add in the opacity again to be 1. The reason why I couldn't drag it is just because it wasn't doing a small enough momentum there, a small enough movement. But that just means it's going to come on screen a lot quicker, which I think is going to look a little bit better. But again, it's very easy to change to get it perfect for how you want it to be. But we'll compile and save that. Now we're going to go over to the event graph, delete event tick and event preconstruct and we're just going to use event construct here. All we need to do here is something very very simple and all that is is we're going to play this animation. So we're going to drag in the flash from the left under the animations tab, get it and this is going to simply be play animation as you can see here. After this I'm going to hold down D left click to get a delay, setting the duration to 5 seconds as that's how long my animation is so set this to be how long your animation is as well then out of completed it's a simple remove from parent just so this is then going to be taken off the screen afterwards as well. So we can compile and save that and that is now creating the flash effect completely done 
the widget is fully set up for us. So essentially all we've done here is create an animation for it coming on and off the screen. So I'm going to close that like this. Now to actually be able to call this so it does affect the player, we need to create a blueprint interface so we can do this nice and efficiently. So we're going to right click, go to blueprints and get a blueprint interface and I'm going to name this one flashbang interface like so, opening it up straight away. I'm going to name this function flashbang and that's all we need to do. So we compile, save and close that. A blueprint interface is a simple read only function so we just create this and we can call it later on and really customize it there. And if you do want more information on what blueprint interfaces are and how they work, I do have a separate video covering that linked in the description down below. But once we've created that, we're now going to actually do that customization I just mentioned, and that will be in our character blueprint. Now you want to make sure you do this in every single character blueprint that you want to be affected by a flashbang. So every player, if they have different blueprints and so on and so forth. So for me, that's content, third person BP, blueprints and third person character. Uh, ignore that error there, that's just because when I deleted the code earlier on when I was showing you it at the start of the video. So in here, we can go to class settings up the top and under interfaces, we're going to add and we're simply going to add in the interface we just created. I named mine flashbang interface like so. Now you'll notice on the left tab, we've got a new interfaces tab and a flashbang function that we just created. So we can now right click and implement function there. Now we can customize this to do what we want. So when we call it from the interface, it's going to call this function here, which will do any code we decide. And the code we want it to do is very simply play sound 2D, with the sound being our ear ringing sound effect, which we imported in earlier. And I'm going to open this up with the owning actor just being get a reference to self. So it's just this character. Now the reason I'm doing play sound 2D and not play sound at location is because obviously it's ear ringing, so it's in our ears. So we don't want it to just be in place on the map where the flashbang went off. We want this to actually be in the place ear, so it's like it's in their head. So I hope that makes sense there as to why I've gone with the play sound 2D. After this, it will be a create widget. There we go, create widget. Uh, with the class here being the flash widget we've just created. And return value will be add to viewport. We don't need to call the function for actually playing the animation as it's going to do that automatically as we did it on event construct. When this is created here, it's the event construct will be fired off. So it will then automatically play the animation for flashing the player. So we'll compile and save that. And that is now all we need to do in the character blueprint as well. So all we need to do now is call the event flashbang function so that it does then actually do all this code we've just set up. So we can close this and in order to do that, we actually need to create our flashbang blueprint. Now, if you've already got one, great. You can just copy along in a moment's time once I've set mine up. So we're gonna right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm gonna name this one flashbang BP, like so, opening it up straight away. Now, I don't have an actual mesh for this, so I'm just gonna make something very, very basic. And we're gonna add a component with that just being a simple cube with the scaling on the X and Y being 0.1 and the Z being 0.3, just so we have this very, very basic kind of cuboid shape here, which looks similar to a very basic, very low poly flashbang. Uh, so we can compile and save that. We also wanna make sure that this has simulate physics ticked so we can actually throw this. Then we're gonna deselect it, add a component and add a sphere collision like so. And this is gonna be the actual area in which the player needs to be in in order to be flashbang. So anything overlapping this sphere collision will be affected by the flash. Now the values I had earlier were 15 on the X, Y, and Z. So we have a, a radius of 15 essentially. So if we minimize this and drag it into the level, you can see how big that's gonna be. Now you might want this to be bigger or smaller depending on what you want for your game. Very easy to change. Just open this back up and change these values here. But for me, 15 is gonna be good. Once you're happy with the values, just make sure you drag the sphere collision onto the mesh for your flashbang as we're going to be throwing the flashbang so we want to make sure the collision goes along with it as well. So we'll compile, save that. Now we're going to go over to the event graph of our flashbang, delete activating an overlap and event tick and we're just going to use event begin play. Out of this we're going to hold down D left click to get a delay and now the duration of this is essentially how long after the flashbang has been thrown do you want it to fire off? 
So this isn't how long after it's landed, this is how long after it's been thrown. So I want it to be two seconds. So two seconds after this has spawned in and it's been thrown, it's basically left the player's hand, two seconds later it's going to fire off and actually affect everything within its radius with a flashbang effect. So that's good for me, again customize that for what you want. Underneath the delay we're going to right click and get overlapping actors. The class filter I'm going to set as character as I only want this to affect characters so other players as well. Overlapping actors we're going to go into a for each loop, not with break just a for each loop because we want to again affect everything within the radius of our flashbang so everything is overlapping. Array element we're going to drag out and get flashbang and you should notice we have flashbang message here. So if it doesn't show up for you that's because you named your function differently. So the function within the blueprint interface, whatever you named it, call that. So you'll notice we have flashbang interface, flashbang message, make sure you call that and put that into the loop body. So anything within the sphere collision of our flashbang is going to be flashbanged. And that I've completed, I'm going to get a destroy actor. So once we've done all the code that we need to do, we're then also going to actually destroy the flashbang itself and destroy the mesh. And actually I suppose what we could do is if we wanted we could also before that, so out the completed, is spawn emitter at location, and this would then spawn in an explosion effect if that's what we wanted as well. So the emitter template I'm just going to have as explosion, well not emitter, sorry, spawn particle system is do the explosion. However, I don't think I've got the start content in here. I don't, so I need to just quickly add the start content so I can then do that. So content packs start content here. So now I've got the start content, I can also just do the explosion particle here. So now it's also going to play an explosion if that's what you wanted to do. Not sure how good this is going to look because I haven't tested it out yet, but just throw that in there as well. So if you have your own custom one, you can place that there. We'll compile and save, and that's all we need to do in the flashbang BP. As again, all we're doing is just affecting actors within our radius when we want the flashbang to, to actually trigger and explode. So we're going to close that and the last step now is just to actually throw the flashbang. So to do that we're going to reopen our character blueprint where we did this code here for the event flashbang. And first thing is we're going to go over to the viewport. Now you notice I already have it here so I'm just going to delete that very quickly. We're going to add a component adding in a cube and this cube I'm going to have the same scaling as my flashbang mesh I created earlier so if you're using a custom static mesh you can add that in here instead. So again 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.3. Then I want to make sure that this is hidden in game so tick that and also I want to change the collision to make sure it's got no collision. So this is going to do nothing except act as a position reference in the world. So the player will have no idea this is here. Then we just want to move this into a position where we want it to be thrown. So when this is thrown, it's spawned in, it will be thrown from this location here. So place that wherever you want, however it can't be too close to the player for this particular system anyway, which is a very basic one. And I'm just going to rename this to be flashbang reference, like so, compile and save that. Now we'll go back over to the event graph and actually set up the code for throwing. So to throw, I'm going to do this on the G keyboard event, so I'm going to right click and get the G keyboard event, like so. You can obviously set up an input action as well if you wanted, however I'm not going to for the purpose of the video. Out of pressed, I'm going to spawn actor from class, with the class being my flashbang BP that we've just created. And the spawn transform, I'm going to right click and split the structure pin. We've just made this flashbang reference so we know where we want to spawn it, so we're going to drag in and get the flashbang reference. Out of this, it will be get world location, making sure it's the world, not relative. And the return value of that will go into the spawn transform location there. Now, the reason we're just, just doing the location and not rotation as well is because we want to get the capture component, drag that in, and get the world rotation for this, plugging that into the spawn transform rotation, as you can see here. And that's just because sometimes the rotation of the flashbang reference will be slightly wrong for where we want it to actually go, but if we do it based upon the capture component, so the direction the player is facing, it will work perfectly, and the scale we can obviously leave as 1. Now after this, to actually throw it, because at the moment this is just going to spawn in and fall to the floor, we want to throw it, so we want to put some speed behind it. So we're going to come out of the return value, 
and set physics linear velocity for the cube because the cube is obviously my mesh for the flashbang and I'm going to connect in the execution pin there but now how do we decide what the new velocity is going to be because this is velocity it's also direction so we need to figure out the direction it's going in and how fast we want it to be traveling so to do that what we can do is right click get actor location then drag out the return value of the flashbang again and get actor location so we've now got the location of both the flashbang and the player if we drag out the get actor location of the player and then get unit direction vector from the player to the flashbang what we've done now is actually got the direction that it's traveling in or got the direction from the player to the flashbang and using that direction we now know what direction we want it to travel in because it wants to continue going in that direction from the player to the flashbang so imagine this is the player here this is the flashbang the direction is this and we want it to continue going in that direction so out of the return value we can get a multiply and that'll be a vector multiplied by a float and this float value here is really just the speed you want it to fly out at so for me I'm using 500 and that's the values I was using at the beginning of the video so if you like those values use that but this here really is just some trial and error to get the perfect value for you you can connect that into the new velocity and that is now the code fully done and working for us so we can compile and save that and again this will now work so what we're doing is we're spawning in the flashbang and they're just adding a bit of momentum to it so it's flying forwards so if we close this hit play we can test it out so if we press G you notice we can now throw it and it's going to go over there two seconds later it despawned as it got destroyed there was no uh, particle explosion there probably just because I'm destroying it too quickly but really I'm not going for that but I just place it in there so you know where to put it but if I were to throw it all the way over and then stand within it what you'll notice is we got the sound effect it came up on screen quickly and it's now also fading out as you can see there so this worked perfectly also what I should say as well is if you wanted to actually change the speed of the player all you do is open up the character blueprint and here where we're doing the event flashbang you'd simply just get the character movement and set the max walk speed to be a lower value and then two seconds later or five seconds sorry basically when the flashbang's finished you reset it back to the normal speed but I think that'll be it for this video it's already done everything you want to do we set up a flashbang in which we can throw it and if we are within the radius of it we're going to actually get flashbangs like so so the player can't see and they have that annoying ear ringing sound as well so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found this video helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one